Hi everyone. Um, my name is Atlas. Today I'm bring, uh, doing a presentation about uh, adaptive cartography in natural disaster management, a preliminary uh, domain gap analysis. So I'm a PhD student from Wisconsin Madison, and this is my first very nice thesis, and I'm really happy to be here. So let's begin with my presentation. Uh, this is the uh, content and we will directly jump into the, uh, my presentation. So first I'll, I'll introduce the background here uh, because of the an increasing trend of the natural disasters, there's a, a pretty high demand of the research on that. And MAP is one of the very important tools to explore and examine the patterns during all the process in the natural disaster management. And one of the very uh, advances of techniques is interactive maps. So this will be one of my focus in today's presentation. Uh, but so far the discussion on the techniques and the data are quite a lot, but not that much and enough on the cartographic designs and uh, related techniques. So here I'm going to do a gap analysis uh, based on uh, some mapping practices in the context of natural disasters. So specifically, I uh, propose a three-dimensional framework to examine the applications related to natural disaster management. So the three dimensions are cartographic representation, cartographic interaction, as well as the context. Here is the disaster management. So finally, I will um, bring a very big table, but I will not show it here. I will uh, just present some uh, charts based on that table. So basically we'll go to review some applications related to that and find the, uh, the potential gaps. So here, adaptive cartography uh, means the process to feed a system to the current user situation, as well as uh, the degree of contents change will include the extent of adaption. So one of the uh, most important direction in the contemporary uh, cartography is try to apply it to a certain content uh, context, which the adaption process. And here, uh, there are some uh, previous research about how to con uh, conceptualize this process of ad adaption. For example, uh, there are four levels of adaption, like information, technology, user interface, and presentation. And also uh, someone proposed uh, components of the context here, uh, user, action, situation, and technology. So uh, there are previous works related to uh, adaptive uh, cartography in natural disaster management. And they have found that cartography already plays a very important role in kind of all stages of disaster management here. And there are several frameworks to try to organize this. But uh, today I'm going to bring a, a brand new uh, framework. So the main method I'm going to use is the domain gap analysis, uh, which will review and characterize ex ex existing map products of the current context. And so I will bring uh, some uh, uh, very interesting uh, applications related to natural disaster management and try to see uh, how this uh, fit the, uh, our, our domain and uh, within the, the framework of cartography in terms of cartography uh, representation and cartography interaction. So here I propose a hierarchical structure as I mentioned before. It, the first level is dimension. The second level is perspective and the third level is item. And I also generate a code schema uh, which use like a Roman num numerals to uh, number the, the dimensions and the letters to uh, number the, the to code the perspectives, and then final, finally uh, numbers to specific items. So uh, we don't have to look too much into those details, and we can uh, directly jump into the the applications I review here. So basically, I use a Google Scholar to try to find the uh, applications related to interactive mapping, and I know there are uh, quite a lot similar keywords here like disaster, uh, natural disasters, natural hazard, or crisis mapping or emergency management. 
But here, just uh, to make it simple, I simply use this one and focusing on the applications after 2010. So here are my three dimensions, cartographic representation, uh, interaction, as well as the natural disaster management. You see uh, for each type or each dimension, there are several perspectives and within each uh, perspective, there will be lots of items. We will review that later in the results. So here is the framework. So traditionally, uh, we can uh, use some uh, uh, techniques or indicators to measure cartography, the representation part. And the recent trend in the uh, recent decades is the interactive cartography. Here I uh, label it as the second dimension here. So uh, you see the cartography is still in a flat pl plane. And then we raise it to the three dimensional uh, with the content, natural disaster management. And this process is what we call the adaption uh, or the conceptualization here. And we have the adaptive cartography and to measure uh, these applications within these three dimensions. So here is a quick view of the three dimensions here. And for this specific item, uh, we will uh, just review that in the result because of the limitation of time. So the first one, I use the blue color to help you remember. And the second one, uh, interaction in green. And the third, uh, disaster management in orange or red. Uh, so it's really a preliminary review. Uh, I cannot uh, just do all the apps. They are just too much. And specifically, I didn't limit the type of the natural disasters. Uh, the reason here is I really want to see what's the difference among different type of natural disasters. So the type of hazard also is one of the uh, important factor uh, among this. So here is uh, the, uh, the papers or the applications I reviewed uh, within these years. And I finally got 50 of the applications here. And these are my results. So uh, for the first dimension, cartographic representation here, uh, we see in the mapping method, which is basically the, the, some types of uh, thematic cartography, uh, probably the most uh, popular one is still the choropleth. And the second one would be uh, like between uh, is a rhythmic map as well as some uh, just categorical uh, points. And we see there are some uh, like pretty fancy types of cartography like cartogram, but these are not really widely used. Maybe probably it's a relatively serious topic. And when we move to the default base map here, it's just there are um, more options of the base map in many of the interactive applications. But here I only review the uh, default or the displayed ones. And here the top would be the topographic or terrain, uh, which makes sense. Uh, the terrain is really an important part in uh, the disasters. And I also pay attention to some additional elements here, like the, the charts, as well as the inset map and tables. So for the temporal uh, representation, I generally refer to the uh, GIS and T knowledge base. So I use their type, but also I noticed some uh, didn't fit uh, that uh, category, but list the te temporal information on the, in the attribute table, either operable or not. And also uh, when we look at the uncertainty uh, realization, the color queue and color value are the most uh, uh, common parts uh, or the method or visual variables to uh, display the uncertainty. So in second dimension cartographic interaction, uh, the web, web map uh, services are usually work as a base map. And the, the first one would be uh, Google map, of course. And also we see a lot of applications using OpenStreetMap uh, or uh, Leaflet, Esri map. And I also analyze the spatial analysis uh, in those applications. But here is just a pretty, uh, uh, shallow application because I don't dig too uh, much. Uh, for example, uh, I, I list a lot of applications with spatial overlay here, uh, but uh, there are actually quite a lot uh, which might or might not fit into these basic types of spatial analysis. Uh, this could be another thing we can explore later. And in terms of the goal of interaction, and most uh, apps 
uh, stays in the first or the, the basic stage to procure the, accurate, the information. And of all the 50 applications I reviewed, 33 have uh, interactivity. So basically uh, uh, the majority. Uh, and also uh, there are four of them, not a, not a very big proportion specifically mentioned is works uh, for phone or designed for phone user. And for the operator, uh, we have a uh, pretty uh, much basic like uh, zoom and pan um, and also retrieve information. And things really vary uh, based on the purpose of these applications. And the third dimension would be natural disaster management. So uh, in terms of natural hazard, uh, we've, uh, we can see like the, the uh, several major types of flood uh, earthquakes and uh, like uh, hurricanes here. And also the first, uh, sorry, the last two uh, types here are not a specific task. Uh, it means uh, these uh, prototype or, or uh, designed uh, applications will fit a lot of types of natural hazard. But half of them actually, 25 of 50, have specific type of natural hazards. In terms of the disaster phases, uh, we know there's a circle of the disaster management and seldomly uh, the applications focus on the preparedness, uh, but a lot of uh, have covered the other three stages quite well. But this uh, review could be somehow subjective uh, based on how you review those applications. And in terms of the scale of representation, um, most of them are focusing on a relatively small scale. I mean, small geographic scale, uh, like within neighborhood or street level, or some have a relatively higher level. And as for the stakeholders, these are another part I didn't spend enough time uh, in this preliminary research. research. So individual, uh, especially related to VGI, are the, uh, the biggest type. And for the data source, we can see the historical records about uh, disasters, the social media text data, as well as remote sensing and infrastructure data, um, the major types that are widely used. And these uh, capabilities are from uh, FEMA. Actually, I didn't use all of them uh, because some are not related to the natural type, uh, but within those, we can see uh, probably the situational assessment are one of the uh, pretty big capability of those applications. But here, uh, these uh, reviews are also uh, pretty brief and uh, quick. I would say maybe if we dig more into the uh, papers, you will see uh, more results or more insights of these capabilities of disaster management. So uh, concluding here, uh, the contents of natural disaster management really plays a significant, significant role in uh, adaptive cartography in terms of uh, cartographic representation and interaction. And those uh, interactive uh, techniques really pre uh, provide great potentials uh, in uh, natural disaster management applications. And under certain uh, content, the patterns are really uh, different and we notice their characteristics and also some uh, gaps to be practiced in the future. Uh, but due to the limited time, uh, we cannot introduce them in details. So further uh, exploration include uh, uh, examining uh, the relationship among uh, indicators instead of uh, just compare them overall. And also we can really dig deeper to the content, for example, the stakeholder, which I didn't spend enough time this time. And, and also we can narrow down the disaster type of course. Uh, for example, we can uh, explore much on this year's uh, COVID pandemic as a disaster. Okay, so this is all of my presentation and thank you so much. Uh, feel free to contact me with any question in Slack. Thank you. <laughs>